It's week seven of the NFL. And up next, it's Bo Nix. He comes in fifth and passing touchdown so far. It's the Broncos and the Saints under the lights on Thursday night. Well, first open back in 1975. There's a look inside the iconic Superdome in downtown New Orleans. Along with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, you look at this Saints team as they interplay. Now, losers their last time out, so they'll look to make amends here. And one of the best ways you can do that is to be at home, and they are. They're going to try and ride that home crowd and that wave of emotion to a victory in this one. Meanwhile, for the visiting Broncos, they've got all Ws on the ledger so far, a perfect 6-0. Yeah, still a long way to go in this season, but they're showing everyone early on that they intend to be there in the end. Takes this near the 25, just a little pass there. Call it the 26. The Saints heading out for the first time, and there's Derek Carr at quarterback in his 11th NFL season now and second in black and gold. And last week's loss came despite a clean game on his end, throwing the ball with two touchdowns and zero interceptions. His job this week is simple. Do it again. Continue to avoid turnovers and hope that what sunk them last week resolves itself this time around. The first carry now, this is Alvin Kamara. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. When you look at this Bronco defense, they were excellent last week in the win over the Chargers. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw. They ended up getting four sacks in the game, stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire time, made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. And that's what they told us this week, that pressure on the QB is key. And only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. This defense for the Broncos, they were excellent last week in the win over the Chargers. I have to admit, I was extremely impressed by what I saw on tape because they stayed in the face of the quarterback the entire game, ended up getting four sacks total, and made it difficult for him to step up and find receivers downfield. Also made it hard for him to escape the pocket and run. And he is going to have a Saints first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Charles, Thursday night game, I think a lot of teams probably say shrink the playbook somewhat. Is that correct? I think you're right about that because you just don't have the amount of time that you have in a normal week to put in a full playbook. So as you said, you shrink the playbook, pick out the plays that work best for you, and you know what else you're looking for? What's that? Who are the freshest guys coming off of the last game to play on a Thursday night? Guys have a little extra pep in their step. You go to them early and often. Throwing out right here, caught by Alave. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. It'll go down as a gain of six, and that'll bring up second down. And they'll send the tight end in motion. Now Carr. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, whatever script they put together for this offensive drive, Charles, seems to be working. I'm curious to see if this defense will make any adjustments here. Things certainly going according to plan, aren't they? I mean, the way they're advancing the football, it's like they're on the practice field having one of their better days. But instead, it's game day, and they're moving the ball downfield with purpose. Give them a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. Solid running on the carry, but still brought down just inside of the 40. Calling an eight-yard gain, much better shape now on third and just a yard. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. Here's Carr to throw. Rush coming, and he's taken down. 
Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. It's fourth down. Here comes the Saints punter now. And Marvin Mims deep for Denver. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. That'll be out of bounds, and how good was that? They'll say the three-yard line. That's where they spot it. So now here are the Broncos to take over on offense, led out by their rookie quarterback, drafted 12th overall, Bo Nix out of Oregon. And he's got to be feeling pretty good about himself right now because he's coming off of a strong performance in the team's win last week. And you can just tell, even early in his rookie season, he's starting to get really comfortable out there and things are starting to fall into place. In fact, in talking to the rival defensive coordinator of the team he's facing this week, he told me this young man's starting to get it. A first carry now. This is Williams. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The numbers for Williams a week ago, 13 carries, 132 yards, and a touchdown. And now that he's playing a Thursday night game short week, you know he spent a lot of time in the trainer's room in the cold tub trying to get his legs back for this game. Second down and a yard. A first carry for Samaj P. Ryan. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. The Broncos at 6-0. What a start to the season for them. And they have certainly got it rolling as of late. Winners of six in a row. And I think this is where, as a head coach, you show your team some trust. Instead of just talking about winning, you know, the very next game, you point out to them, we're on a nice run here. And if we keep doing this, We'll be playing at home in the postseason, and we know that that can ride us all the way to the Super Bowl if we get that done. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. Denver has the first down, the play going for 15 yards. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Here's Nix. And that will fall incomplete. Oh, they took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. Broncos football as we begin quarter number two as they've got it with a second and ten. Next to the air. And that is incomplete. Nearly intercepted. But free safety couldn't quite get his hands around it, and it brings up third down. So this game, Charles, you know, we talk about potential unbeaten seasons a lot. It feels like every year at some point in the season we talk about that. But this is one of those games where if you're unbeaten, you got to be careful. You can't take this one too lightly. You're exactly right about that. And by rights, this should be a cakewalk. Almost a week off. But the starters are the score in the first half. Backups get the play in the second. But you and I both know the funny things sometimes happen when you think this way. So it's incumbent upon the starters to really play well to make it work for this team. 
Just 34 yards on the punt there. No return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The Saints offense led by their running back headed out for the second possession. And he's made his presence felt in the passing game throughout the season. You look at the NFL's leader in receiving yards by a running back. His name right there at the top. Call it a gain of six on the play. And it'll be second down. Kamara up the middle. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. Not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped him. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. That is caught, and he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down, and that's what he just did. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half, and I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. On play action, it's Carr. He's going to sling this deep downfield. Carr tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Caden Stearns. And the Broncos are going to take possession here at their own 33. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. In motion goes Patrick. Throwing Nix. He'll get this one to Patrick. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. And this was a nice example of an offensive coordinator scheming his guy open. Just a little underneath route, just trying to free up some space. And it worked awfully well. Got him not just space, but plenty of room to run after the catch to pick up really nice yardage. And he's going to take this across the 50 and into Saints territory. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Good yardage there on first down. Exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs. Keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. It sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. They run it with P. Ryan on first down. Yeah, maybe a little over pursuit there as he's able to take this down to the 25 yard line. A solid gain of 18 yards and a Denver first down. Off the play fake, Nix. And he will find his man Sutton. That's complete. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. It's all pretty simple sometimes, isn't it? Go where the defenders are not. And he does exactly that. Makes a nice catch to move the chains. Defense, got to find a better way of accounting for the shorter routes that are being run against them. Up the middle, here's Pirine. And he'll get this one back to the five-yard line, but no further than that. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. 
to throw. Here's Nix. The quick slant caught. Touchdown, Broncos. Cortland Sutton, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Broncos will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. I'll let you do the analysis, partner, but with every touchdown pass this young quarterback throws and with the success that his team has had, I just continue to be more and more impressed. Let's both do the analysis. Impressed, aren't we both? Yeah. I mean, and why shouldn't we be? We've seen him improve throughout the year. We've seen him settle in now, and you can see the confidence of the team has grown. His confidence has grown. I think that everyone around this guy feels good about what they've seen. And it's also safe for him when he's driving home to turn on Sports Talk Radio. He's okay. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Well, the Saints offense going to head out now late in this first half. With his slim deficit closing in on the end of the first half, we'll see if they can move this at least into field goal range and try to get three out of this drive. They'll send the big tight end in motion right. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He gets this complete to Shahid. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 40 seconds remaining in this first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Here's Carr. He completes it to Wilson. Flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Here's second and five now from the 37. To throw his car. And the Broncos get there and take him down. Now the Saints will use their third and final timeout. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. So here's a third and 14. Carr. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And they move this all the way down to the nine. The final shot here before half for Carr. Toward the pylon, Carr. Touchdown, Saints. Chris Olave. As time expires in the first half. And the Saints have a chance to tie the game here in the final seconds of the half. Well, my education continues in this game. I've got to tell you because there's not an analyst in the world that would have said pass up the field goal here, go for it, and expect for it to be successful, and it was. I mean, they're playing this one just like a video game. <laughs> Especially for the final play of the first half to have the guts to do that, but I guess what we say, the end will justify the means, right? No doubt about it. For you and me, we live, we learn. So thanks to the late touchdown, it's a time ball game here heading to break. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports Halftime Report. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. We'll get back to you and Charles in a minute. But first, time to give the folks at home a look at what's going on around the NFL. Plenty of great games coming up in the next few days, starting with the last of our three London games. Pats and Jags from Wembley, early start, 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Excellent games in the late afternoon window as well. One being out in Los Angeles, where it'll be the Rams taking on the Las Vegas Raiders. And finally, a good one scheduled for Sunday night football between the New York Jets and the Pittsburgh Steelers. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. They are all even to this point. This has the feeling of a game that could go right down to the wire. One mistake or one big play could turn out to be the difference. Both teams going through their... Welcome back, everyone, to the Superdome just west of the French Quarter in New Orleans. Our halftime festivities behind us as we're just about set for the opening kick of the second half. 
Set and ready to go for the second half. One touchdown apiece, 7-7 seven, seven our score. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. For the Broncos offense set to begin this third quarter. It's a tied football game here. What do you think, Charles, the message was at halftime? Well, I think that they probably just looked at things and said, we're fortunate that this is a tied game. No need to panic, no need to change a whole lot. We didn't play anything close to our best in the first half, so we don't have to go out and win one for the Gipper. Let's just go out and play our best football and win one for us. Short throw caught by Dulcich. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Ten yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. So here's a first and ten at the 38. Now a give up the middle to Williams. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. So this game, Charles, you know, we talk about potential unbeaten seasons a lot. It feels like every year at some point in the season we talk about that. But this is one of those games where if you're unbeaten, you got to be careful. You can't take this one too lightly. You're exactly right about that. And by rights, this should be a cakewalk. Almost a week off. Let the starters run up the score in the first half. Backups get to play in the second. But you and I both know that funny things sometimes happen when you think this way. So it's incumbent upon the starters to really play well to make it work for this team. Here comes third and about a foot. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. That's caught inside the 20. And all the way home for a Broncos score. Cortland Sutton with his second touchdown of the game, number seven on the year. And the Broncos have moved out in front. Well, partner, I mean, if anybody was still questioning whether or not he had an NFL caliber arm, I think you can toss that right out the window. That was a heck of a throw right there. I would agree totally. Question it no more. This rookie, big time throw right there. Great poise, stepped up, trusted he could lay it in there perfectly, and he knew that his guy was going to make the catch on the other end. Nice collaboration. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And he won't quite make it to the 25. The Saints offense and the veteran Alvin Kamara getting set for this next possession. And he's made his presence felt in the passing game throughout the season. You look at the NFL's leader in receiving yards by a running back. His name right there at the top. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point. But it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense. Plenty of time to get back in this game. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second and six. Throwing now is Carr. He'll be brought down by the Broncos. It's a sack. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack. And it's third down. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. 
And that will be incomplete. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. That'll be a 43-yard punt, just a single yard on the return. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. So here are the Broncos to take over on offense. Their win streak at six coming in and counting as they've got the lead right now beginning this drive first and ten. They begin the drive with Williams. And that's just a solid, good physical run there as he motors for nine yards. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a yard. Now it's Nix. And that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. He did a fine job there of not hitting him before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often miss time that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. On third down, here's Williams. And Williams is going to be stopped short of the yellow line. He did not get there. Now it looks like we've got a Bronco that's banged up on the play. Well, hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, is going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. The Broncos send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. Fair catch called for and made at the 16 or maybe the 17-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. Carr going to lead the Saints up here first and 10 at their own 18. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Complete to Olave on the out route. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great work in relation with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. A good down to possibly take a shot, and in fact, they'll come up with an empty backfield on second and inches. Carr. Ball tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Levi Wallace with a pick, and he returns it into enemy territory down to the 45-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time, and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. The Broncos' offense and Javante Williams head out for this next drive, and he's had his fair share of troubles in this one, unfortunately. This defensive front has wreaked havoc throughout the contest, and he hasn't been able to create enough space to make something positive happen to this point. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Part of the thinking when you bring in extra tight ends, you're hoping that each of your guys gets those one-on-one -on -one blocks and creates a crease for your runner. But the converse is, though, You've got to win those one-on-one -on -one blocks. And when you don't, that's the result you end up with. They'll go play action with Nix. Got a man open. It's Sutton. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. 36 yards on the play. They made that way too easy for them. No one is supposed to be that open against an NFL defense. Once he caught the ball, there wasn't anybody close enough to stop him. And he was able to continue downfield after making the catch. A 
Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. Nix to the air. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. As this old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. 42 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. With a heavy set out there. Three tight ends in the formation for third and three. To throw his Knicks. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. That's a good piece of quarterbacking right there because he certainly felt the pressure coming. The alternative, getting sacked for the first time. He didn't like that option at all. Did a nice job saving yardage by throwing that one away. The kick by Lutz is good. And they will move up by 10 now, 17 to 7. If you think about it, that's a pretty important second half field goal, Charles. That now stretches this to two possessions and really kind of ratchets up the pressure on that opposing sideline. It certainly does because that interception and adding a field goal to it, that puts them in firm control of this game right now. They're about one more big stop from putting this thing absolutely out of reach. The Saints offense on the field ready to get their drive started. So now, Charles, this drive maybe a touch more important trying to erase the memory of that interception they had the last time out. Yeah, and everyone goes through this because even the best in the game, you're going to have games where it just doesn't go right for you and interceptions result. So, frankly, to me, it's all about how you respond, not just the types of plays that you call, but how you carry yourself, how you show your team that you're still with it, and how you continue to lead. Back now here live in New Orleans. It's the Saints who hold the football, but they're trailing as we begin the fourth quarter of play. Thirteen yards remaining on second down. Here's Carr. Oh, what a heck of an effort there as he'll make the diving catch. He's up to 88 yards receiving in the ball game now, and he's got a first down. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Now a timeout here, at least for the moment. Looks like one of the Saints is injured shaken up on that last play the medical staff will attend to him and we will step aside second and nine from the 44 now car there's a short one to the tight end Johnson but following the play now, they're going to stop the clock here as a man is shaken up. But the medical staff is going to come out here and take a look, and we will take a short break. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted three out of five thus far. This is third and four. Car going to throw. Pass taken in by his big tight end. Touchdown, New Orleans! Juwan Johnson, his second touchdown of the season. And the Saints have made it a one-score game again. They're the fourth. So that's a really big play here in the fourth quarter. And don't look now, they're right back in this game. Did it feel to you as it did to me? that maybe they were a little bit soft in what they were lining up with on defense. Almost like they were protecting the lead rather than trying to make a play. And now that lead is down to just one score. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. 
The Broncos offense and veteran receiver Cortland Sutton getting set for their next drive. And he's had some kind of game. They made it a point to get him involved early, and it has paid giant rewards to this stage of the game. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and ten. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. And for the defense, this is a spot where you don't want to totally sell out to stop the run, but you do have a pretty good idea of what you're going to see. And that's good work right there to keep them in check on that first down carry. They work now on second and nine. Here's Nix. Finding his big receiver, Patrick, over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 23 yards to pick up there. And these guys certainly are not hiding what their intention is. They're absolutely showing it. They're definitely not going to sit on this lead here in the fourth quarter. Both teams working on short rest, but this has been one of the better Thursday night games we've seen as they come up here on first and ten. They'll hand it off now, Williams. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. Brought down by Willie Gay. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. On play action, here's Nix. And that's going to be caught by Sutton. And he'll be out just a yard or two shy of the 30. The rookie from Oregon on target with that one. It leads to a first down. Well, a clear running situation. Try to take time off the clock. He ran the previous play, set that play action up nicely. Boy, did they ever, because they had shown the ability to run the football. So now you lose your keys as a defense. You dive for the running play, and they hit him over the top. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he gets stopped up at the 31 after a gain of maybe a yard. Well, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but works some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession. So they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. From the 31, here's a second down and nine. To throw, here's Nix. Sutton reeling it in on the left side. And this is going to be another first down as the tackle's made at the Saints 19. 12 yards there as they move the chains. This is something you got to be wary of defensively. I mean, just because they're in the mode of trying to burn some clock doesn't mean they won't pass it. They got good yardage out of that one. Yeah, and really, when you're looking at it, now they've got a fresh set of downs. Look for second down if they want to take another shot and try and loosen things up. That would be the time to do it. And he'll manage to break a tackle and get this forward for a couple. It'll be second down. Able to stay in bounds, and the clock keeps rolling. And this defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in. And all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, break it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. So it's Bronco football as we get your reset here. They've got a third down, but they are in field goal range already. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Now a handoff. Here's Williams. And he is going to have the Broncos first, and that should be the capper. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. 
Going for the knockout punch. They'll try and run. And a really good show of force there as he gets through for four tough yards. Oh, Brandon, I'm going to tell you, this is football time to me. They're inside the 10-yard line. That's like drawing the line in the sand. Who's going to make the stand here? Defensive guys, they know if he gets in the end zone, this ball game is over. And the guys with the football right now, they're thinking, let's just pound it in there. Got to hold him to three to keep this a one-score game. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. Touchdown, Denver. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long. And this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early. So now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. And they will not get a chance to return this one. It's through the back of the end zone for a touchback. So time for Carr and the Saints. Down 24-14. 45 seconds remaining. It's an extremely tall order in front of them, but they've got the ball with a first down. Connecting with Johnson. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. Clock management, definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agree. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. And nowhere to fit that football in. It's knocked away and incomplete. Passing lanes, tough to come by with so many defensive backs on the field here late in the game. And it's not just the number of bodies. It's their quickness and their agility that makes it tough to complete a pass. That's caught by Johnson. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. This is first and 10. Again, it's Johnson. They said their goal was to win seven games. They've done that pretty early in the year. I think it's time for them to elevate that number and really make a big push to finish this season strong. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From New Orleans... Good night, everybody.